Hey, can't do it. Rick's here. Well, I wish that this video was going to be uh, inside my little arts playhouse here of crafts and drawing and all that other good stuff. But this is going to be a little bit different of a video. This is one of my DIYers, you know, like how to catch gnats, you know, how to make uh, roast your own coffee at home, that kind of thing. You know, how the channel originally started way back in must be a million years right now well this is just one more inserted DIY and I'm gonna show you why I've been so tied up that I hadn't produced uh, any videos in the last three weeks and I haven't been back to my old drawing board here uh, you remember you remember her don't you yeah kinda of bombed out on that one well like I said I'm not a quitter I'm gonna get back on it but in this video here we're going to change our direction just for those who have troubles like I've got troubles. Let me show you. Well, it's a it's a freezing ugly day out here today. This is my little street here and uh there's my my frontier that's what allows me to get around because well let me show you some look at that thing that's a 2002 Honda Odyssey or as Eric O would say Hondu and uh, well I've got some troubles with this baby and uh, I'm going to be uh, showing you in this video how I'm going to try to fix it uh, I've been doing a lot of things in here now this this little girl here has 217,000 plus miles on it. Let me show you what the engine looks like for a 217,000 mile Honda Odyssey. Look at that. Does that look like something with 217,000 miles to you? Well, I hope you say no, man. That looks brand spanking new. Yeah, I baby this thing. I baby this thing since it was a baby. Uh-huh. I've had it actually, I'm the second owner, but I've had this thing for 15 years. And next year this becomes a 20 year. And as they say in insurance and registration, becomes a classic, believe it or not. So I really took care of this thing, as you could pretty much see. Still has a little bit of shine to it, though it really does need a little bit of TLC on the body. Now some of the things I did on here before I get right onto what it is I'm actually doing this video on which is a stripped out tranny thread threads which is really a bummer about four or five years ago I, an I added this external uh, cooler tranny cooler you see right there ran some hose and then if you go right in here you'll see right there is a magnifying filter now that I just put that one back in that, that's a new one. Uh, I replaced the old one. So uh, I put it right here so it'd be, well, one, it's close to the cooler and back to the inlet of the transmission. But also, because, you know, all you do is you drop the bumper and you can get to it. Fortunately, it's not something I plan on changing every 5,000 miles. It'd be more like every 30,000. So I won't be doing that for a while. And I figured, hey, you know, if I'm going to go ahead and take tires off here to get to the what I need to do, I had to change out these brakes and rotors, so I went ahead and I got me some new rotors and brakes, and I just finished that one there, and I finished the other one, I put the tire on, I don't know why I put the tire on that, I'm not really done, I could have probably used the extra room to get in there, I might have to take that back off again, I didn't torque it down, I just used the impact gun on that, alright, well, let's get right into the real reason that I'm doing this video and that is oh yeah let me show you you can see that I don't have a whole lot of room in here to work I, I had nothing but gearhead stuff in here that's just crowding everything and then on the other shop side of the shop is all woodwork and I'll show you that in a minute but I got me some now let's see I had to get some some red tack red and tacky grease here for Lucas and I got me some uh, a tie-in, uh, excuse me, a, a tap and die. Let me set this camera down here on a mini tripod so that I can 
I can show you guys better. Now, uh, let me give a call out to a couple of channels that, uh, well, although they don't need uh, the subscribers like I do, I'm, I'm just a small timer art guy. Uh, these guys are big. They're big in the auto YouTube sphere. But if it wasn't for these two guys and a couple other channels, I wouldn't have a clue how to do any of this stuff. You see, I, I'm not a mechanic, right? We all know I'm not a mechanic. I'm just a can-do-it guy, like like a lot of you are can-do-its, okay? And uh, there's uh, like Eric O over in South Main Isle Channel over there in Avoca, New York. Uh, call out to Eric there, man. Really like your videos. And then there's Eric, the car guy, pretty down-earth dude and quite a big following. Uh, seems like a lot of people are into cars. Who'd ever thunk that, right? Yeah. All right. So anyway, I want to give a call out to those guys because, matter of fact, uh, it was uh, Eric, the car guy, who, who had this one video where he was uh, replacing the bolt that was, was threaded out in an oil pan. I forgot what vehicle it was. I don't know if he mentioned it or not. I don't, I'm not going to go replay it or anything. And uh, he says, hey, you still got half your threads? Well, go down to the hardware store or whatever and get yourself uh, a, a longer bolt, cut it, taper the end of it, whatever, and you're golden. Okay, and he was dealing with a 14 millimeter uh, by 1.5 pitch. Uh, now, my problem is not an oil pan, all right? It's worse, okay? It's the aluminum case of my transmission. So, it's threaded or stripped but it's stripped halfway through and the other half are still good because the bolt wasn't really that long. It was only half the distance. I think it's about 24 millimeter depth in that hole. And there's about only 12 millimeter of thread on that uh, bolt. As a matter of fact, I, I didn't bring that bolt out. Let me go get it and show it to you. Man, it is cold out here. It's 34 degrees. Oh. We're just a couple of degrees away from getting some of that white fluffy stuff coming down. Anyway, there's the bolt. I don't know if you can see that. You should be able to see that right there. Okay, those threads, it's 12 millimeter long, and the whole bolt's about uh, 30 millimeter if you get to the end of the magnet. And what I've done, thanks to the suggestion of Eric, the car dude, car guy, sorry, I don't want to miss uh brand your channel there well he he was dealing with a 14 millimeter i got to deal with an 18 millimeter but the concept's still the same so i got me a 30 millimeter that was the smallest they had of an 18 metric 18 by 1.5 pitch and let me show you what i did to that because i got a little creative with that okay i, I gotta go back underneath the the van to pick that up just just stay with me all right it's cold. Okay, so here's the deal. I gotta find me a place to lay in a wrench without shorting out the terminals on the battery. I went and got bought this. That's uh 30. See if you can get that in there, okay? That's 30 millimeter long. That's a, a M18 by 1.5 pitch, okay, millimeter pitch. But the difference is the head bolt, the head bolt was 27 millimeter. Whoa! I don't have a wrench that's gonna fit 27 millimeter. Are you kidding me? I don't have the toys those guys have. I'm just a simple guy here who draws pictures and plays with pencils. That didn't sound right, did it? Anyway, maybe I'll edit that out. All right, but here's what I did. You know that 27 millimeter bolt? I figure, okay, you know, there's a there's a guy there on the on the Audi forum there. I'm going to give a call out to Ted because I know he's going to be watching this. Hey, Ted. Nice chatting with you, man. All right. Well, here's what's up. He says, hey, Crescent. Yeah. Duh, I should have thought of that, right? Okay, anyway, I would have figured it out. Just put a Crescent wrench on the head, right? Crescent wrench won't move uh, when you get close to the case. Case has got some kind of an indent thing and you just got no room to move. Turned out the biggest uh, ratchet wrench that I got here in my repertoire is a 17 millimeter i'm gonna put that right there on my nice shiny uh, intake cover uh, doodad whatever they call it um 
So what I had to do is I, I went to my grinder and I did the most insane thing and I probably every mechanic and every hobbyist out there is going to go, dude, you're nuts. Or they might say, dude, you genius. I kind of hope it's the latter, right? Anyway, check this out. Can you see that? There is now a 17 millimeter nut head on that puppy. Look at that. And it's got a nice thick flange on it too. I grinded that down on my grinder, my little garage grinder in here, and I put a 17 millimeter head on that and a flange. And I rounded the flange, made it nice and round for the crush washer that goes on it. And it looks like, uh, what did I do with that crush washer? So they tell me, hey, you know, you need to, you know, go to one of those rubber washers, you know, and that might be a thing to do. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of making this permanent. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that once I get this fixed, hopefully I get it fixed. Oh, I know I'll get it fixed. That um, I'm never taking this bolt off again. So if I'm going to do any more fluid changes on this Audi, which I am, uh, it's going to be done through the dipstick. And I got this pump somewhere in this garage here, one of those can pumps. And I'll just pump out that fluid, then pour it back into the dipstick. That's what I've been doing anyway. Since this had the recall on it back in 2005, they used the filler plug up here. It's way down in there. Uh, they put this little bypass so that uh, fluid can go up over the uh, second gear and the training. I don't know. It's all high-tech stuff, you know. Anyway, so there you can see now I got the crush washer on there and it sits really nice around that flange nice flat so this is going to be a really good thing here's the thing when I try to put this bolt in that hole it stopped halfway where did it stop right where the new threads are and uh, I, I could have tried to keep turning it, see if it'll just kind of force its way in there. <laughs> Man. But there is a there is absolutely no way that I'm going to do that. If I start cross threading those threads, you think I have a nightmare now? I'm definitely going to have a nightmare trying to find a way to keep that transmission from leaking. <sighs> Now I don't know, I don't know who messed up my tranny bolt, but this van was out of my possession for six months. I loaned it out to my daughter. She and her boyfriend, they uh, they assured me they were going to take good care of this girl, even though at that point I had actually given it to her to keep because she needed transportation. She's since given it back to me since she's decided to go in a different direction and now lives in the other side of the country so and w without him <laughs> uh, at least something good came out of that all right so what I got here is an 18 millimeter uh, die and I have a 18 millimeter tap so what I'm gonna do this just came in yesterday so I told everybody on the Audi forum I was going to make a little video on this and that is, is I'm going to take this tap and I'm going to see if I can just edge past the, the parts where you have the, the strip threads and then you go into the new threads. Now I would rather use what's called a back tap, except I didn't learn about a back tap until after I ordered this. So I figure I'll go ahead and try this part first. And I'm going to gingerly do this with my fingers. And I find I got a lot of resistance. I'm going to have to make a decision. Do I keep going? Or I go ahead and spend another $25. Seems like I've been throwing that around a lot. And get me that back tap and try that out. All right, well, first things first is been a whole lot of nagging on that auto forum that I need to go run a die on my bolt. It's a brand spanking new bolt. I did taper the end of it a little bit, but here's for you guys on the uh, Audi forum. I'm going to run this die on here. I don't know if there's a front or a back on this show so much I know about dies, but I'm just gonna gingerly feed that puppy in there. Ah, boy, the things that I do for Hollywood. Let's see here. Maybe it's the other. I don't know. Is there is there a 
right and the left on this thing? Boy, you guys are on there going, for laughing out loud, Ricks. Don't you know how to use a die? Well, actually, I'm not going to answer that. I'm taking the fifth. They might be on to something here, though, if I can't just easily get that thing to go. Okay. Maybe if I just take this washer off first thing and quit bugging me. That's definitely not in straight. I see. I'm trying to I'm trying to run that die through the threads here and I'm not having a good time with that. Huh. Come on boys and girls, let's let's get in there. What's going on here? get my glasses before I start stripping this thing let me tell you something uh, when it comes to learning things if you're uh, if you're humble enough to admit you don't know something you'll learn things but if you're proud and you're gonna insist yeah you know you know you know you know you know everything and you're not gonna learn Jack uh, no offense Jack all right and I don't know what I'm doing because right now I seem to be hanging up on this this little baby here. So I don't want to. It's it's right where you have the the taper there, and I sure hope that taper didn't cause me a problem. Let's see. I might have to go on and figure out which side of the die you're supposed to go on. I have to imagine because you got an angle here that you got to only go in one way, right? So which side goes down? Which side goes up? Okay. Well, let me take a look at the threads on here and yeah, that's not telling me anything. All right. But I need to be able to get that on there without too much trouble. Now, it seems to start right there. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Woo, I'm a pro. All right, now let me pull it out before I destroy too much and see how I did there. Hello? Oh. Hey, good morning. This is Christina. I'm with the Taylor team at Keller Williams. How are you today? You're with who? Keller Williams. Ke we were just calling. We had a house we sold near you recently, so we were just reaching out and offering a free market analysis to kind of give you a better idea of what your house is worth. In case you thought about selling in the next year or so. Is that something you might be interested in? Uh, no, but thanks for the offer. Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Great day. You too. Selling my house. I'm going to sell my house. All right, let me just put a little greaser on there. I don't have any of that tap stuff. See how prepared I am. Ooh. Let's get some of this Lucas stuff because I'm going to need that for my tapper anyway. The whole purpose of the grease... Uh, as far as uh, when I do the tapping, is, is a lot of it is to do with uh, making sure that uh, I catch as much of the shavings as possible. Now I'm going to put a little bit on this threads here as I'm putting it through the die. Make sure that's all nice. And I'm going to try to put this bolt in without tapping first because I did have a little bit of resistance there putting that... Before you all start thinking that I should have probably tried the bolt before I tapered it, I did, and it it stopped at the same spot. So yeah, I know I'm a dummy, but I'm not that much of a dummy. All right, now let's try this again. I'm going to go a little deeper this time, and I'm going to just run that that bolt right through there. And by the way, people. Uh, feel free, uh, if you don't like a lot of this rambling, you want to get right to it, just jump right to it. You know, I appreciate it if you don't thumbs down me for that, you know, because I, there are some who want to hear some of this, you know. But, oh gosh, I'm not sure I'm doing this right. Doing it by hand, and it gets tight about right there. You sure that's a... 18 
That's the question I have. Wow. Yeah, that that's going in right. Why is it stopping? By that, you know what? That's a good idea, Ted. Run that die. I'm gonna have to put this like in a vise or something because. It goes in part way and then it just kind of says later alligator. In a moment here, we're going to go underneath the car, but first I got to make sure I got me a good working bolt here. I'm starting to wonder. Oh, the joys of working on cars. All right, see now it's screwing in. But then it gets really tight about right there. Oh, I can still turn it though, but it's real tight. All right, I'm doing, I'm going for it. It's just a bolt. It cost me 16 bucks for that bolt too, if you can believe it. Okay, still going by hand here. Ugh. Well, now I can't go any further. Let me check to see what I did to my bolts. My bolt, the singular bolt. Huh. This might help you guys someday, but wow, that threads, that's not cross thread, that's not cross thread at all. Take a look at that, if you can see it, you know, let me try to get a light on the subject here. But look at that, that's clean, all right, it just stops. So you know I, I got a feeling that this uh, idea of uh, running the die over this thing is a great idea dude Ted you're in Arkansas man uh, buy you dinner dude yeah it's got to be a Taco Bell around here somewhere <laughs> just kidding man just kidding nothing but the best nothing but the best that would be like uh, the steakhouse down the street yeah. All right. So. Oh, the FedEx. Always bringing gifts. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run this all the way down like a clown. Oh. Yeah, I told you this thing works on a 17 mil now. Look at this. I'm doing this by hand. See, I am a vice man. Well, okay, I spoke too soon. Gosh, I sure hope. Sure hope he ain't monkeying this. You take it off. Make sure I'm still okay. Yeah? Yeah, still okay. All right. I'm such a chicken. All right, so screw that back in. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my vise. I don't have my tool, you know, one of those die tool things with me here. I go find one of those things. And this just was a die and a tap that came in the package. All right, let's see how this works. All right, well. It's not bad. Okay, here we go. A little bit of resistance. Now a lot of it. Look at that. It's turning the whole thing on me now. Oh boy. That's scary. That's scary. Let me just torque it down a little bit more. I sure hope I'm not sacrificing this bolt because this baby has got to save my life. grease would take care of everything but well, let's get some oil in there I think I remember something like that in auto shop way back in the mid 70s that's how far back that was they didn't really do much with computers and stuff in, in the cars you know but oh you're just not going to stay still for me are you there chappy all right here we go I can see all the comments now you crazy what are you doing just Sticking in your vice like that, you know. Back it in, back it out. 
and we're almost down all the way. All right. Yeah, you know, it was really funny is the other day I was going through the Harbor Freight website and I was looking for a tap and die set, you know. I said, you know, I really could use a tap and die set. And uh, I didn't buy one. And then one, one day, like a day after, I, I, I see this old plastic thing sitting there on one of my shelves. It's a brand new 40. Look at that. Unused. Never been used. Now, none of these are the right size because I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with an 18 millimeter hunk of mama. And that thing ain't going to fit a hunk of mama. Okay, and that's for the tapper there. So, I'm going to have to use the vise. I don't have a choice. Uh, I'm going to have to uh, feel confident that uh, that this uh, die, whatever it's made out of, some pretty strong, it's got to be stronger than the bolt, I would imagine, to cut the bolt, that I don't end up crushing in the diameter or anything. That, that would be terrible. But it looks like, wow, it looks like it's really cleaning up those threads. I, I got to keep up with that. Let's keep doing that. that well, it's going in pretty good. I'm, I, I'm thinking this could just go in without the tap once I'm done with this. Man, oh man. Okay, let's get this all nice and... Yeah. Lubricant is cheap. Use it. We're almost down the flange there. That's what I'm going for right there. And there we are. I ain't going any further. That would be real dumb. All right. There's another guy I like to watch on the YouTube. He's quite entertaining. Uh, sometimes I learn a few things, but he's just mostly entertaining for me. It's like, you know, he, he finds these old cars uh, that haven't been driven in like 20 years, 25 years, and... Uh, he gets them going just enough to get them home. I think he lives in Minnesota or something. Originally from South Dakota. Um, I think it's called the Vice Grip Garage. And uh, there's a call out to another channel. I've called out to three channels and a and an Audi form. How do you like that? Okay. Oh, I hope these stretch are good. Come on, baby. Come on. You can do it. We can do it. We can do it. Let's do this. Look at that, boys and girls. Can you see that? Those threads are pristine. And I got all the roughness off. Man, thanks for the tip, Ted. Let's go work our way down and down underneath the car here. And Oh, brother. I got so much stuff here. It's ridiculous. Okay, so we're going to... Oh, let me show you this. I was wondering where my bumper went. There's my bumper. And the reason I took the bumper off, and by the way, you don't have to take a bumper off to, to work on a transmission drain bolt. But uh, this baby here has got a nasty crack right there. All right. Somebody in my family decided that uh, bumper kissing was a thing to do so uh, i'm going to take my plastic welder i got from harbor freight and i'm gonna weld that puppy and i got me some uh, factory paint clear coat sandy paper all that good stuff because uh i'm going to uh i'm going to restore that bumper back to pristine condition for my old 2002 odyssey all right, well, I don't need to take this die down below with me, so let me just put that over here. I do need to take this uh, uh, 17 millimeter with me. I definitely need the bolt. I'm taking the grease and the tap. Oh, it might help if I had a light too, so let's take the light. 
and it's time to go underneath the car. Now, let me just show you the problem first, and uh, we can go from there. Let me get this camera here. It's hard to hold the camera, you know, and do this, but take a look at the threads. But as you can see, the beginning threads halfway through are stripped. The second half is unused because the depth is 24 millimeter at least and the bolt is only 12 millimeter the original with the magnet but at least the replacement is 30 it's only going to extend past that hole by about six millimeter maybe less than that because i have a washer on it now so say about four millimeter it's perfect a lot of clearance in there all right let's get to it i'm really optimistic now because of the um of running that die where am I gonna put this light? You guys ever have problems trying to figure out where to put a light? Man, I don't really need a light, but the camera needs a light, I think. Let me see if I can do this where you guys can still see what's going on and I don't blind myself. Okay, I think that I think that looks good right there. See, can I see my hand? Yeah, there we go. All right. So you guys are joining me now on this little venture. Okay, so first things first. Let's try not using the die, but I'm going to, I'm going to try to run this newly threaded, well it's not newly threaded, but the threads are clean on it now, see if that will run all the way through. Now by the way, you see that right there, that big old lip and this, this case, that 27 millimeter head that I had on this bolt was no bueno. There was no way I was going to get that in there. So taking it to the grinder was a good thing. And you saw as I was dyeing this, the threads on this, that the 17 millimeter worked perfect. That nut I put on there. So, all right, I'm going to do this by hand. And it's going in smooth. Now I want to see if we're going to get past the bad threads into the good threads without any issue this time. Oh my oh my whoa oh look at this i'm not tapping there's no need to tap look at this guys all right we're in the new threads now come on oh i feel it yeah we're in the new threads but man i could i could keep going check this out oh yeah all right take it easy baby make it last on oh wow okay i'm going i'm going I think I think we got it. I think we got it. Let's just just let's just try. Oh wait a minute, we're a little stiff here. Okay, I'm getting a little resistance here. All right, I'm gonna take the see what happens if I take that die to it. I mean that tap. I'm gonna take that tap to it, just just to see if if I need to clean. But look at this. How deep did I just get with this thing? Man, oh man. I think we're almost there. We're almost home free. I, I, this is a patience game, guys. This is a patience game. If you don't want to have a bunch of leaks, you know, or a leak. I don't know why I always talk in plurals. All right, come on. This bolt's so long now. Yeah. All right. Let me take the light and take a look inside. Hmm. Yeah, I'm a little worried right there where the transition is, is what I'm worried about. Darn, oh darn. All right, let me, t I'm going to take a tap. I'm going to take a tap to this thing. I have no choice. I have no choice. I got to do something. I can't leave it like this. Can't leave it like this. So where's that tap? There it is. All right. Now look at this, this cross member is in my way. I was going to use one of those, uh, so I could barely get this in here, but I can, but it was just barely. Let me get some grease. Oh, boy. You know, I really honestly hope this helps the next guy out who ends up with this really bad problem of a, you know, oil pans, stripped oil pans, pretty common, but stripped, tranny, and this isn't a pan. This is the case. This is a transmission case, and this case isn't even available anymore unless you can find one in a junkyard. All right. 
I'll put this in here somehow, some way. Yeah, yeah, the troubles. I gotta get something for my hand here. All right. Okay, get it in there. Let's see. All right. Now you gotta gently. Sorry, my hand's in the way. I don't have another way of doing this, but I'm trying to carefully. Oh man, this is not going to be easy, is it? I need to carefully get it to catch on the old threads if I can and do so straight but I'm not even looking at this straight I'm laying over here at an angle because I can't get in here I might not be able to do this I'm not going to give up just yet but come on Come on, where are you? Oh, man. Let's see if I can rearrange this camera angle here for you guys. This is really, this is really something where filming maybe isn't the best thing, but I want to make sure you guys get a crack at this because, you know, so let's see can you see that all right let me see i'm gonna put this camera here and put my finger right there nope you can't see that okay get that oil pan out of the way so hopefully i'm not going to be too much in your way but i've got to somehow get this leveled in there and right now i'm stuck okay there we go That cross member wasn't in my way. That would really make life way easier. I'm probably gonna go for it with that bolt if I can't get this. I'm about ready to weld this thing shut permanently. Be done with it. Hey. Come on, catch. Come on, you can do it. We can do it. Come on. We can do this. We can do this. We can do this. Said the little train trying to get up the, the hole. That is not in right. Come on. Come on. I'm going to mess up my threads trying to do this. A few moments later. Oh, man. Are you kidding me? More moments later. Is that it? No, I don't like that at all. Okay, boys and girls, I am not doing this. Oh, I'm not doing it. I think that's going to cause me more problems than it's worth. So. We're going, we're going for it with the, with the bolt and the washer, and we're gonna hope that it torques down. And if it does, I could see where it's cross-threaded in there. Darn. Let's hope that it actually, this actually is able to work its way through. Darn it. Really hoping. Just for giggles, I'm, I am gonna put a little bit of grease on here. I know this. Grease is not the thing you want to put on something like this. Probably want to put some Loctite. They never come out again. What do you call that? Sealant? Put some sealant on there. But I just want to see if I can get this to... Hopefully it didn't mess up the entry. No, there we go. All right. Yeah, let's see if we can get past the... 
Let's see if this will cut. Wouldn't that be great? Because it does go in a ways and then it it gets caught up on something. I don't know what. Virgin threads, obviously. Come on. All right, here we go. Oh shoot, that is tight. Yeah, that, that's cross-threading right there. That doesn't want to go. Darn. Darn. I'd have to make new threads on that. Shoot. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good, no. Nice and tight, but it does. It's like it, it's like it wants to taper or something instead of go all the way through. Why? I mean, there's no wiggle on this thing. It's almost if I just went ahead and cut the bolt shoulder, it just it would just tighten up and that'd be the end of it. What do you think? Check the end of this bolt here. I got a little bit of grease on it and see if there's. There's no thread on there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No. No way. Uh -huh. I've got it. No way. Hold on a second. Hold on a second, boys and girls. We're going to do something here. All right. No way. Okay. Let me put this back in. Okay. Let's do this. Gosh, this is actually going to be really, really valuable. A really valuable video someday. I want a million views. All right. Let's put this in. As far as it will go. As far as it will go, okay? Let's put it in as far as it will go. Oh, boy. This is happy days, man. Happy days. All right. Right there. Okay, right there. Now, let's count the threads. Let's count how many threads are left. Okay. Uh, and I can't see where the banana. Okay, can you guys see that? I don't, see I don't know if you're even watching when I'm watching. Here's the bolt. Yeah, it's just not, not straight on though, but. All right. Count those threads there. What do we got? You know, wearing reading glasses, I don't know why I can't see. All right, I got. They got. Uh, let's see, that's uh, about one, two, three, four, five, six to seven threads. Six to seven threads exposed. All right, now let's see how deep this thing went in. Then so we got six or seven threads left. Okay, so oh, let me pull this out. Lefty Lucy, Benny. There's just left is this way. Yeah. yeah. No, I didn't look at my two hands to figure out which way left is. All right, six or seven. Yeah. Hope you guys know what I'm getting at with this. Six or seven threads. Hmm. All right, let's get let's get out from underneath this car here. This thing went in until there was only six or seven threads left. We're gonna see how deep that is. Okay, one, about one, two, three, four. Five, six. So that means that we've got this from there to the end of this bolt is what it went in. All right. And that will be, let me get a total here. Let's say about 11, 11 or 12. Okay, so this went in, this went in 11 to 12 threads. Now, Let's take a look at the original bolt. 
and let's see how many threads this thing is. I only have to go past it by a couple of threads or so. Ooh, my eyes got big. Ooh. All right. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six threads. Six threads. How many did I say the other one was? Okay. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have twice the distance to go with this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut this puppy off by six threads and then taper it down maybe by five threads, six, six threads because I don't need to I don't need to get it beyond into the case I just need to use up all those threads and that that actually went to the very last thread and then it stopped you see what I'm saying? All right, and I didn't want to force it after that so it's it's gone past the halfway mark easy. I guess it's time for the hacksaw. I hate the hacksaw. You know what I'm gonna do? Forget the tapering. What are you tapering for? I'm gonna hack off about six threads, and then I'm going to go and run it through the um, die one more time. Sound right? Let's do that. Oh, come on, baby. We got work to do. What is that? Wood dowels. Just wondering what happened to those. Should be able to find anything you want in this garage. It's nice and clean. Okay. It's uh, let's run that die on it now. Whew. Yeah, them good threads. Okay, washer is on there. It's all re-threaded. Come on, guys, root for me on this one. Here we go. Yeah, easy start. Good. That's a good sign. Go in. We're almost there. Look, I'm almost going all the way in. And I am going all the way in. Look at that. Okay, now, question is, can I hand tighten this? All right, moment of truth. Will it tighten without spinning? Yes. It tightened, and I'm not tightening it any more than that. I'm gonna test it for leaks. If it holds, good. If it doesn't, I'll tighten a little bit more, but I ain't going past this point right now for nothing. And I can't tell if that wa that crush washer is crushing or not. That, gosh, that's subjective if you ask me. I think it's the most ridiculous thing, crush washer. Can't even tell. I'm gonna clean this area up here real quick. Little brake fluid. Get off. Get this tranny all nice and clean. Get that leak off of it. It's leaking all over the place. All right. Give it a nice shine job here. All right. No shavings, no nothing. We just want to make sure that this puppy will hold tranny. So I'm going to. Stick in, maybe a half a quart or something. All 
right, and we'll find out once and for all. All right, now I already know on every drain this thing, it's a uh, three quarts and about 48 ounces, whatever. I'll check the dipstick after three quarts and four ounces, and of course I spilled some, whatever. But this is what's left of the last one, so yeah, it's about three quarts and. Uh, this is 32 ounces, and I've got about 22, so three quarts, 10 ounces, something like that. Anyway, I'm gonna put what's left of this in there. And uh, no, this is not Honda auto transmission fluid. It's ASIN, okay, DW1. It's gotta be DW1, but DW1 is a tight specification. Okay, so any DW1 is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and pour that puppy in there. Now she's going to go in slow because that tube isn't very big. Yeah, I'm back. Um, I kind of thought about this a little bit and I thought, man, what a softball play. I'm just going to put in a half a quart of transmission fluid and, and, and then that's going to be enough to tell if this thing has a leak. It's cold. And that... Uh, that transmission fluid right now is kind of like a really thick Yukon syrup. Let me get in here. What I'm going to do is uh, I just went ahead and bit the bullet. And I put in three quarts and uh, four ounces. That was about what it took uh, pretty close. I'd rather be a little few ounces under than a few ounces over because if I go over, I got to loosen that bolt out and take some of it out and I'm going to do that mm -mm. I'll have to go find that pump thing wherever it is I'm sure I still have it somewhere we moved over here three years ago and things get lost you know but I know I got it around here somewhere but anyway I put in the full complement three quarts four ounces of uh, DW1 transmission fluid and I'm going to warm this vehicle up a little bit now it's on stands in the front the wheels in the back are on the ground, but I'm not. You know, I'm going to go through the gears on this thing after it warms up, because it, when it's cold, it'll hit the the reverse gear pretty hard. You know, I don't like that. But when it's warmed up, it purrs like a kitten. So I'm going to warm this thing up. Then I'm going to shift it through the gears while I put my foot on the brake. I got my emergency brake on already. You don't want this thing moving off those stands. That ain't a good thing, especially when I don't have both front tires on. Hoo hoo! Wow, that would be something. All right, so let me just uh, put this on the dash here, see if this thing will work. That way, you got to keep on looking at my ugly mug while I'm doing this. Oh gosh, I never do like uh, messing with a vehicle too much when it's on its stands. You know, it's kind of kind of makes me worried. You know. All right, let's get some focus here. All right. This is the very first Ricks Can Do It inside car shot. Never had this before. All right, I'm gonna keep my foot on the brake pedal. Oops, that wasn't too smart. Well, that was the dumbest thing I ever did. I completely forgot I'm not done with the brakes. <gasps> so anyway, I'm not gonna be putting this through its gears. Hmm. But we'll just go ahead and warm her up anyway. Emergency brake is on. That's going to have to do it. Man. I can't believe I just depressed that pedal without putting the caliper back on the right front. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, I got to stick to my drawing board. You know, but hey, the whole idea of this video, you guys know this with me, okay? The whole idea about my channel is to show what you can do, even if you haven't done it before. All right, you know, if Rick's can do it, so can you. And that means fixing transmission strip drain plug holes. That's a lot of words for just one little hole. And, uh, Things you should and shouldn't do, like pressing your brake pedal when you haven't put your calipers back on. So I'm sure that piston now is all sticking way out. 
Ugh. That's great. I got a little tool, I'll push it back in. You can use a C-clamp too, I've done that, but I went and bought a little ratchet tool, makes it like this real easy. While we're waiting, I want you to see how this engine purrs at 217,000 miles. Just, just listen to this, how quiet this thing is. That is a hum, that vehicle is humming. Now I do know that uh, cameras like to pick up little ticks and stuff. Trust me, this thing sounds normal. It's really, really nice and quiet. And there's, uh, I forgot to put the calibers on. It's pressing on the brake. Well, so it didn't come out. That's a good thing. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get this taken care of. When we get back, we'll check the transmission. Well, she's clean as a whistle, boys and girls. Looks like she's going to hold, but we'll know after I drive her around town a little bit. We'll see how that works out. But I'm feeling optimistic. Everything seems to be real nice so far. There we go, there's the nut. And uh, it doesn't look like it's leaking. The only mess I have is, is over here. And that's because not only did I dump a few ounces of tranny fluid on the wrong side of the funnel, but that I, um, I sprayed a lot of the brake um, cleaner down there to clean up around there. And a lot of it just kind of sprayed on but what I'm concerned about is right there at the nut and I don't see anything coming off that nut so far so I'm going to say that that thing is a success I'll know for sure of course tomorrow and if you don't see a follow-up um, matter of fact I, I notice there's dripping here but it's all water because it's raining so a lot of the wetness kind of fools me but uh, it looks really dry it looks like it held up really nice um, so I'm not going to torque it anymore I'm leaving it right where it is it's nice and snug and uh, I think this thing is a is a go and uh, you'll know otherwise I'll update this um, but I think that's a fix so there you go guys um, if Rick's can do it so can you there's a strip tranny drain plug repair done rather cheaply if i might add all right well i'll see you all in the next video so thanks again for watching bye